And welcome to something a little bit different. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself, Paul Blumeyer, owner of 2501, and a very good friend of mine, Bruni Saint, otherwise known as the Thunder from Down Under across the Twitter wars. But <laughs> Bruni, unmute yourself and let's have a chat. Okay, I'm muted. Here we go. <laughs> How are you, brother? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Been enjoying a, this, enjoying this. Yeah, uh, but it, it's not often that I get to speak to you like this. No, no. This is, my God, is this our first time? Uh, doing a live show together? No, you've been on other live shows that I've been part of, but not as a host, really. And you're not always seen as a no. person. People know who you are across the world, right? How about you tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Um, okay, well, I smoked for 44 years. Um, I started when I was six years old. Uh, nine years old, I was smoking regularly. And uh, from the age of 14, I was smoking at home because the parents knew they couldn't stop me. Um, definitely, definitely smoking helped me through school and everything i was you know it helped calm me down i was I used to be quite an aggro fellow at times and just yeah smoking helped it helped concentration um didn't really want to give up uh but at the same time i mean been on the pension and prices going through the roof you know it was uh, around about 60 odd dollars i think for a pouch of tobacco when I quit, and now it's up to a hundred dollars. There's no way because I was smoking three pouches a fortnight, basically, which is 150 grams of tobacco. Wow! So, and yeah. and now, like where you were to where you are now, what you're spending on vaping, and your health before and now. Um, health. Well. Um, I was on four different, well, still am. I'm on four different uh, blood pressure tablets because I couldn't get it down. Doctors were getting pretty worried as it was up around 150 over 110 sort of thing. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> yep. That's heart attack material. Exactly. So, and I was only, uh, well, 48 at the time or something like that. So, uh, yes, they were very worried. And now... My blood pressure is, uh, I can't remember, but it's, 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 it's at a good level now. It's at a good level. Okay. How long, how long have you been vaping now and how hard did you find it to switch from combustibles across to this world? Uh, I've been vaping now seven years and I pretty much... I knew if I had tobacco left in the morning, I would I would go for that first because I had all the vaping gear already and all that sort of set up. So I pretty much finished off my tobacco and when I was fanging for a fag, I went to bed. Mm. And in the morning, I sort of got up and, of course, the first thing you reach for to settle the nerves is a cigarette. So I was vaping, I was... Vaping, I was vaping, I was thinking, nah, this ain't working, nah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to go down the shop and get some cigarettes, this is, this is just not working, and it must have been about half an hour before, I can I have my coffee first, and hmm. within half an hour, I, I just sort of realised I wasn't fanging for a fag, I wasn't needing that cigarette, I was, I was um, sated with um, nicotine, the vaping was working, and that was like day one. And I never had a smoke after. Well, you know, uh, probably about a year later, I thought I'd just try one. Some friends were trying to encourage me to have a cigarette. So I thought, oh, all right. And I took a couple of puffs and said, Phew. and uh, gave it the flick. No way. 
I was, I was sticking with vaping. Okay. The biggest thing that I found when I switched from smoking combustibles and switched across that I could smell things again oh. and I and I could taste things. Yeah, yeah. I, what I was, what was, was the first sensation or the first smell that you could actually get back? Um, well, I thought my nose and all that was damaged from too many times being hit in it. Um, I was in the supermarket. I was just getting near the checkout. I must have been, you know, four or five people back. And I was just getting this smell. I couldn't work out what it was. I started, you know, it was just weird. It wasn't unpleasant. It was just weird. And it was um, flowers. It was flowers sitting at the end of the counter for sale. And I was like, wow. And that's, that was the first time I sort of noticed that my nose was working again. Okay. That, must have been within, that was definitely within the first year. I was probably a few months in, basically. Okay, the second question. Do you eat fruit at all? Yeah. Okay. What was the first flavour that came back to you, like really came back in, in the back of your mouth and you went, oh, I haven't tasted this in God knows how long? Well, you got to remember that I did smoke young, so um, yeah. My, by the time I was 15, 16, my taste buds were, were pretty um, down. Uh, the first thing I tasted was um, nectarine. That was, you know, it's a, a subtle flavour. So it was just starting to get stronger and it was just pleasant. And tomatoes, oh my God, I love tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And can you tell the difference now between a shop-bought tomato and something that's grown at home? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. And that that was, yeah, that was, that was so pleasant because... I grew up with uh, three acres of greenhouses, um, and they're all tomatoes. Uh, <laughs> tomatoes. And, it's yeah. the first flavour for me because I used to eat a lot of citrus, okay, and a pomelo. A lot of people know what a pomelo is, like a honey oh. pomelo. It, it's like a huge grapefruit, but it's actually got like a ruby inside yes that was yes. the first flavor that got me when i got off the cigarettes the second one for me was rock melon or oh. in the u.s they call it cantaloupe yeah they were the two things that i could taste again but the one thing that i still hate now even after i've given up smoking is watermelon but you probably love watermelon i <laughs> I love watermelon. Yes, I, yes, I grew up with that. that, that that's a. But yeah. could you taste? Could you taste the difference when you were smoking as to giving up with watermelon? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. There's just just some subtleties that just come to the front again. You know, just come to the forefront with the with the watermelon. Um. Ah, uh, I'm not good at explaining it. Yeah, definitely, definitely watermelon was, was an improvement. What else? Oh, most fruits, apples, you know, I mean, um, bananas, just, just, yeah. Okay. Um, let's get, <laughs> let's get on to a different topic because I know that you're on like a form of disability pension here in Australia. If you could say anything right now to the TGA and to the Australian government with their new prescription model, what would you say? You are so cruel. It is so cruel what you've done just to people, to smokers, that you're basically blocking them from switching over to, to a, a, a proven safer product. There is no denying how much safer vaping is over smoking and you are doing this to, to oh, it just makes me so angry. I'm sorry, but it just makes me so angry and, and how proud they are of what they're doing. 
you know, I mean, so many things that are, are for adults and kids will always want to try things. That's 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 what they do. And organisations are basically been pushing kids to try it with all the dramas they've created around vaping. If they just let it go and just let it come in quietly like it was doing and, and adults were finding it because they were trying to quit smoking and, you know, you, you do a search trying to find different ways to quit smoking because you've tried before, it, the kids wouldn't have had the interest in it that was forced onto them by being told no all the time. I don't know what to say, Paul. It's just, it's just so cruel what they're doing. Okay. And your, okay, your interaction with the prescription model, I, I've heard what you told me and it, it makes me like shake my head and go, what the F is going on here? But as kids, we're all crafty little bastards, right? There's no two ways. We drank, we smoked, we did all kinds of stupid shit here in Australia, right? No, no two ways, right? But now, what did you go through trying to get a prescription and what did they tell you? Oh, um, my doctor is a, uh, a specialist in uh, addiction, you know, and he said to me, if I want to smoke, smoke. But he's not interested in vaping. He doesn't want to know about it. He he knows what he's doing. He, you know. Yeah, ah. but hang on, hang on. That makes no sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What Paul. what ever happened to the Hippocratic Oath? I don't. I don't think they have to swear that anymore. I really don't. I. I they, Pretty much be able to make up their own now um what i read on it um they can make their own oath what they're going to swear to but still basically they you know cause no harm and this blocking and fighting and and trying for prohibition that is harm that is there's just no two ways about it Okay, take a step back, all right? Here's another question for you. Are you a white Australian or are you one of the first people here? Or do no. you have any bloodline? I'm a first-generation Aussie from Pommies. Right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm the first generation of Australians for my family. Here's another no. question. Not Aboriginal. No, but how much prejudice is put on First Nation here in uh, Australia when it comes to smoking? And how much help do they get? I don't think they get any help. I mean, let them die, I think, is, is, is the philosophy by the way things are going. Um, wow. Wow. Basic, wow, 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 wow. Way back in the 50s and that. For their for their work on the stations, which is pretty much on their land, when it yeah. was taken from them, they were paid in tobacco, tobacco flour. That that was their wages. So basically, they were, smoking was pushed onto them, and now just just cruelty. Just again, it just you know the the. This ridiculous model with the, with the taxes, which are exorbitant. How there hasn't been a case from from one of the international, you know, do good law groups on what they've done, but they are keeping them so poor because there is a high unemployment rate. Yeah, and that's another thing the Australian government's not talking about. They they say one thing, but they're doing the opposite. They're actually importing workers when... Yes. What the hell's going on? It, because it's cheaper, cheaper than training people. It's easier to import them and then kick them out when the job's done. No? Yeah, but a lot of them don't get 
kicked out, they stay here or they go back to school and they they stay. They work on properties doing like fruit picking at minimal wage and they're all smoking from what I've been told. Yeah. Well, I mean, Europeans, I mean, smoking is, is a big part of their culture. You know, the, a lot of the, the students and that, they come out and do the smoke, you know, do the picking and everything too. Um, it's, yeah, it's part of the, the relaxation. It's just a, it, I don't know, it, part of the culture. That's all I can think of putting it as. It, it, it's hard to put into words sometimes because you and I, we both fight in the background, right, for THR here in Australia, right? Regardless, we get into trouble. We, you know, we get bans on Facebook. We get bans on Twitter only because we speak the truth. Why? I, I mean, I've been banned and I haven't said anything nasty to the person. I just basically showed a few facts and figures and that was enough to get me banned. Why? I don't, because they don't like it. They don't like to be undone they think they're they're being smart and everything i mean they know they know the facts they've heard our facts they've read the sciences they've read the reports but do, then they just try to undo them do you actually like, think they read the reports though honestly come on yeah i do and i think they it's just a game i mean he who cannot be named <laughs> Name the names. Chintman. You can see it's a joke to him. Yeah. You can see. He, he finds it, it funny. You know, I mean. Um, yeah, he taunts us all. He, right? he, he's Order of Australia for vandalism. Yeah, I, I, I'd actually like that removed from him. But I'd also like Australia to step down as one of the signatories to the FCTC. <laughs> but. We'll oh, see if that happens. When Skerritt was going to have him as an advisor to the to to vaping, to how the TGA, or why or TGA, because he would have had a good little word in in, in Skerritt. He's he's into marketing. He reads people. He plays with people. <laughs> ah. Yeah, it it it's just his his thing. No. And as as for okay we're going to go back a little bit to the question i asked about the tga and their prescription model <clears throat> in in the last little bit of waffle that scarrett brought out he said it only cost a vapor about 12 dollars a year that was their costing right it's not how much if how much even to someone on a pension in Australia, how much is the prescription? Well roughly the roughly. The prescription for nicotine yeah. is not on the PBS. So it's Correct. full cost. And there's no refund from Medicare for it. Right. So you're looking at ninety to hundred and seventy dollars. Okay. So he he came out and he said it's only twelve dollars a year for a vapor. Really? That's a pure lie. That's that's just a pure lie. No, it's bullshit. That's all it is. Bullshit. Right? And along with the three hundred and seventy doctors that are now prescribing nicotine. Yeah. Where? It's it's no. There's eighty listed, right? on the TGA website, 373, I think, his last figure was, yet they're not listed. The rest of them aren't listed because they don't want to get blacklisted by the AMA or by the RACGP. How does this even work? Well, I mean, the, the, the Australian Medical Association, that's basically nothing more than a union. Thank and you. Thank so you. clout that it's, it's really... They're controlling the doctors. They, you know, like if, if you don't do as we say, we'll kick you out of the union type attitude. 
Yeah, but uh, when the AMA was a power here in Australia, okay, they had 45,000 doctors registered. That's down to, it's whittled down to about 10% of that pretty much now of what they had. Here in Australia, like there's people asking in the chat, how many doctors do we actually have registered here in Australia? Um, we've got 110,000 doctors registered here in Australia, but Skerritt came out and this is Professor Skerritt, the head of the TGA, and He's he not- said that all of them are actually capable of prescribing nicotine. Now, do you want to go to a pediatrician, Bruni, and ask for a prescription? Honestly. No. And, um, I mean, doctors have got to basically pay to be able to prescribe the nicotine, don't they? They have to get uh, registered to... Uh, They've got to go through a magical little course, and that's quite funny, right? <laughs> It, it is quite hilarious. And then the RACGP has their own little course that you have to do all these brownie points to go through that section of it. And you speak to the pharmacies, like the pharmacies, and they're going, uh, no, if it doesn't say this on your prescription, you can't have what it doesn't say, but you have that on the shelf. Uh, no, you can't have that. Yet the websites are proving, okay, Let's take Chemist Warehouse for an instance. There's nothing on their website. There's a section for vape, but there's no products. Do you know of any compounding pharmacies up in Queensland that are actually handing over liquid nicotine? My pharmacy looked into it and they said, yes, they can do it for me. Hmm. But it was from a company in New Zealand that, it was a product. It wasn't the nicotine. I wasn't able. They they wouldn't be able to do the pure nicotine for me because they didn't know where to get it from. Um, they wanted to offer me a system. What know, was a, it? A little pod, basically a copy of the the jewel, I suppose is the word for it. And, name it. And, name it because yeah, I think they're it. in a bit of. I think they're in a bit of trouble right now with the TGA. <laughs> good because i can't think of the name of it either um but my god i mean for a 12 dollar pod they wanted something like a hundred and something dollars excuse know? me yes exactly oh, oh, oh I, have to, I can't remember oh lieber 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 farmer or whoever it was was that yeah. one of them yeah it was yeah so something like that but wow I mean, the, it's like, you know, a thousand percent markup, if not more. And I hang, know hang, for them. I know they pay for them. Hang so, on a second. So they're, they're offering you just a, a closed pod system, not an yeah. open system. No. Purely closed pod system. And was there a cap on the nicotine that they offered you? Uh, well, didn't get that far into it because I saw the pod that they were offered me and there was no way no way I was going to go down that path and they wanted you to go through a pharmacy and pay X amount of dollars for garbage yeah exactly wow exactly. wow well, wow, well. finally you know I'm having this conversation on a live international advocacy show yeah. that we're now getting to the bottom of it because I, as a lot of people know, no, I won't go to a pharmacy and no, I won't have a prescription written for some bullshit pod that tastes like garbage. I like flavors. You like flavors. I've Don't even, I, I, I've even mixed things for you and sent them up to you. Yeah. And some nice flavors. <laughs> Bottom line is, where do we go from here? I don't know, mate. I, it, I mean, I'd like to know more about this person in Victoria that was uh, got that seven thousand dollar fine for uh, importing nicotine without a license. No, that was for a device, apparently, like a pod. Oh, okay. it, it was a it was a pod system. When you read into it a little bit further. Yeah. 
And the three companies that, well, two companies and an individual, since the prescription model has come about, they've handed out $66,500 worth of fines. Yeah, and that's in Australian pesos for anyone that's, anyone that's listening because our dollar's worth nothing really on the open market. But one individual was singled out and $7,992. There has to be a GST component in that, right? And, well, everything has GST here, right? Hey. And the other two companies, $19,000 and almost $40,000, right? So far within the opening of this new prescription model. It, it's just cruel. I mean... That's enough to, to shut a company down. I mean, they're not making that much profit because, let's be honest, I mean, we're a small country. A lot, most people are buying from overseas. They're not buying locally. I try to buy local if I can. You know, I, I prefer to shop locally because I like to support those that are trying to support others. I mean, vaping helps other people. So, and... A lot of people, the older generation, I mean, they don't trust the internet. They don't trust buying stuff off the internet. I mean, brother's only five but, years old, and he's just, he just does not trust the internet for buying but, stuff. Yeah, okay. but we we've been we've been called bots, shills. I've been I've been noted many many times as being part of big tobacco here in Australia. Right? Sure, I speak to big tobacco and I follow their science because they're actually trying to turn around and change the wrongs that they've done in the past. That's that's my take on it, right? I understand that, and I appreciate what they're trying to do for the industry, right? They, they're not our any enemy anymore in my world. I, I respect what they're doing, but I do not respect two people right i do not respect the who and i do not respect bloomberg in any way shape or form he wants to be an emperor he's, he's trying to control the world he wants he wants that power let's be honest bloomberg he just i don't know how to put it he likes a fight he's a small man syndrome or something like that you know it, it, it is a thing, small man syndrome, by the way. Um, he wants to be that powerful person. He's got the money to do it. You know, I, don't know. Yeah. I, I, I relate Bloomberg now, right? And this is an old, old school sci-fi movie that I loved growing up as a kid, Flash Gordon. And <laughs> yeah. like, like, no, it's Ming the Emperor right that's bloomberg ming yes. right and we've just gotta we've just gotta whack him with a big stick whack a mole yeah but oh you and i've been playing whack a mole for the last five years together right, <laughs> yeah, and, right. And, and i find it quite funny but bloomberg i call him ming the emperor or the wannabe emperor yeah that's that's my terminology for him but that's i like Goldmore for whatever they whatever the boys have been saying in the back <laughs> back in here. The I think it's quite funny. The younger generation calling Voldemort because you know that, yeah, that's that, that, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I understand Rob, but we've been called shills, um bots, enemies of the state even in, in some parts of the world. We don't care. We know what's right. They they're doing the opposite. They are. I mean, I mean, you know, the latest one. You know, like we've been saying, vaping saves lives, and and a mm -hmm. lot of people are saying it because they know that it saved their lives. You know, like those with the early onset COPD. You know, they they switch to vaping, and they've been told by the doctors that they're no longer got. You know, they've no longer got the signs of, of, of going to end up with COVID. You know, no. and, and then, you know, a few years down the track, and then they're not going to be fine. So, yes, vaping saves lives. And now, 
as I don't know if it's just a cruel joke or what, but now they're saying, you know, since this COP9 crap, oh, sorry, um, since this COP9 uh, event, um, they're saying F, FT, no, FCTC saves lives. Yeah, I know. I turned that around. I actually yeah. said FCTC destroys lives. That, exactly. That just makes me so angry that they think they can do that. You know, can say that so openly, and that they know they lie. Come on, they know they lie. Okay, what about if we could actually have a seat at the table at the FCTC, right? Yep. Who would you like to see at that table, and why? Well, Men, uh, Colin Mendelson for one. Uh, oh, so you, you, you'd you yeah. like to... Okay. So you would like to see academics and real THR advocates at that table. Name some right. other people that you would like to see at that table. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. This yeah, guy. I agree guy is a non-smoker he he admitted to picking on his friends and, and you know rub them up for being smoking and all that until he started looking into it yep he was and what crying. happened and what he, happened and what happened was uh cop did, um this 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 COVID thing um destroyed his release of, of a billion film. light yeah, no. well, a billion lives came out, but then you don't know nicotine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, your billion lives that changed New Zealand. The politicians that saw the movie mm -hmm. started backing vaping, and then vaping become open in New Zealand, where Correct. you could sell it and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't just New Zealand; it was. Um, Oh, I can't know if it was Denmark or Poland, but somewhere in Europe, mm -hmm. their politicians also, once they saw a billion lives, mm -hmm. changed, changed their, their view on it. They changed their view to supporting it. And I'm so disheartened that the politicians didn't get to see you don't know nicotine. I mean, it's 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 on um, uh, streaming um, ibex.com. Correct. Uh, stream it, but you know, politicians don't like to pay for things. They like everything given to them. Well, Aaron even even reached out to me. I asked him a question, and Aaron said that he would make it available to the whole of the Australian government, to the parliament, to actually sit there and watch it, and to all our health ministers that think that nicotine is you know it's similar to weed but it's not exactly. THC, it's not it's more like coffee come on let's be it's more like caffeine yeah all right well you like a coffee in the morning don't you oh definitely, definitely. i like three or four but you still until i've had my morning coffee i mean i'm yeah well, i drink about five cups a day <laughs> But how many people, you know, in the morning, you, they can't talk, they can't communicate until they've had their caffeine fix. You know, it, it caffeine, you, if you're uh, a heavy drink of caffeine, you'll get headaches if you don't have it. You know, it has those side effects. Similar, of, yeah. So nicotine doesn't, hype you up like um well, amphetam amphetam amphetamines yeah it you know relax you as much as as um cannabis you know i mean you've got two strains of cannabis one one one's pretty much a calming go to sleep type mode cannabinoid yeah. and the other one is an up and i keep forgetting which one's which but yeah, once like a, a bit of a, an upper, like nicotine, nicotine can change depending on the mood you're in and what your body needs. It, it just fits, mm -hmm. you know, 
because those little molecules just go into the right slots inside your brain. So if you're anxious, yeah, but we we're actually we we're actually born with those receptors. Exactly. It Why? Fits what you have got because it, it's we're all part of nature, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, we are. Yeah, I agree. Um, which what what is it the oyster or something that there's the same sort of DNA as us or the uh, oyster? I like okay. eating oysters, but we won't yeah. go down that pathway because that's going to get me in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> well, I used to like clams. That's yeah, I like cl I like clams too, but that's going to get me in a whole lot of trouble as well. <laughs> Can't talk about that. Uh, no. <laughs> but basically, one of those shell shellfish has DNA like us. You know, we, we, correct. Yeah. So nicotine shouldn't be this so stupidly prohibitionist towards it. it I mean, smoking, I can understand. Okay, it sure. Killing people. Yeah. Before. Angry that they're, you know, that angry at the tobacco companies for selling it. That were, you know, but it's been going on for so long. It was going on before they even knew that it gave cancer. You can't right. just say, okay, that this product um, does this right. We're ripping off the market. Not when it affects so many people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, well, when, when I a, agree. A, when an alcoholic goes through rehab they will not take smoking off him because it's just too much pressure and can do harm. But here in Australia, they do, though, if you go into rehab. Yeah. True. Well, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Don't forget my doctor. He said, if I want to smoke, smoke. You know, and he knows I'm more... Of... <laughs> Put that up. Is that you, Nancy? Shellfish don't vape. Be like a shellfish. Well... No comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I love it. But going back to who else would you like to see at the table if we can get in COP10? Well, I mean, Jerry Giack, I mean, he's such a wise man. No, he's, no, he'll never get a seat at the table. Oh, no, he won't because he, they, they, basically I think they fear him really because of the knowledge he has. Um, Correct. Oh, I mean, I miss I miss some of our old uh, advocates of old, you know, like uh, David Dawn and yes. uh, Lauren and Twig Twiglet. I mean, they used to be so strong advocates. And Margaret Cook, she was she was um oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, stupid or something. I can't remember. Uh, but no, uh, it's fine. No, it's fine. Yeah, you know, like so many have gone by the wayside because of just they got high and they got pressured and it just it just become too much for them, you know, because they they lived it, you know, they, the the emotions, they they had empathy for what mm -hmm. was going on, they had empathy, you know, and it, they knew that the longer they put vaping in the back books and trying to, to stop people from switching to it. It was killing people. Correct. And it was just too much. And yeah. Yeah, I, I know who it is now behind that account. <laughs> Hello, H. <Haish. laughs> but no, I, I'm glad that we're having this discussion because and sorry I put you on the spot, but yep. an off the off the off the cuff discussion like this sometimes brings out the best in us. Okay. There's one other person I, I'd like to see at the table, and yes, she is a friend. I would like to see Lindsay Stroud at the table oh, representing yeah. the United States. Alex Clark from Kassar. I'd like oh. to see him at the table. I'd also like to see Nick Orlando at the table, Florida Smoke Free. Yes. Okay. Oh. They, these are people that I would like to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with and just what? walk in there and go, ha-ha, we win, you lose. We've got a seat at the table, bitches. Yeah, I mean, Mike Peterson, Honestly. He, he knows it, what's going on. He's good. 
it look there's other people that I would love and I know for a fact that you'll never get a seat at the table because he was David a former yeah. Winston man, David Gullers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I that, told him I uh, say that. <laughs> man, that would be funny as hell. But this is what gets me. I mean, he he basically turned his back on the tobacco industry. You you'd think wouldn't they accept him because of that? No, because he <laughs> no, because he 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 put with he worked with Matt Myers and that crew, right? Yes. So, no, he, he wouldn't get a seat at the table. Um, I actually sent a message out to David before we went live to see if he was awake yet for him to join us, but he's probably dealing with his grandchildren. But yeah. <laughs> I before, before the end of this is over, right, before the end of COP9 and what we're doing here on Scope, I would yeah. like to get you, David, and Nick Orlando and H, oh. like Hanaj, into an off the cuff discussion like this. We're not, and, and by the way, H, I'm not swearing. The only thing I've said is bullshit because that's what it is. Yeah. And uh, I, honestly, yeah, Lindsay's right. Yeah, they'd be too afraid of us because we come with qualifications, we come with knowledge from around the world and a community well i'm not going to call it a community anymore we're a family i'm over community all right we're a worldwide family with similar similar problems we've and pretty much pushed us together they it i don't think I mean, yes, I mean, once we found out vaping worked, it was a real hallelujah moment. You know, it's really much like a somebody who, who's discovered Christianity in a later life, you know, in a, in a later stage of their life, and they just want to tell everybody about it because it helped them, you know. It helped them through a difficult period. And vaping has helped us through a difficult period, and that is so many times that we've quit, and I, I, the longest I quit, and that was around about 24 years old, and that was eight months. But as soon as life throws a, a curveball at you, yeah. you know, it's, you know that the nicotine's going to help settle the nerves. It's going to help calm you down. It's going to help you think clearer and all that sort of stuff. So you start smoking again. You know, you think, I'll, I'll only one, only, only, you know, while I'm going through this bit, but you can never stop again. Actually, Ian, we don't own that hashtag, by the way. That belongs to Dr. Glover. She was on Sun of Liberty Radio, and oh. like they were, they were like church mice, right? Patrick and Kevin were like church mice, okay? And then she came out and said, no, bot shit. And it went from there and it was hashtag from then on game over dr glover owns that we don't but yeah we're all bot shit crazy apparently according shit. to <laughs> according to the world didn't she didn't but i mean mother Glover, she went through hell basically with uh switching and what she was trying to do i mean yeah it's a third story so it's not for me to say but she basically went through hell for a, for, a, for a long period of time. Oh, she was so, black banned, and she still is for the most part. And she's indigenous for fuck's sake. Sorry. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, but she's. I, I love her. I love that woman to death. Warrior. She's a warrior. She's come back. She's she's fighting strong again. And and I'm, I'm it just was such a yeah, you know, my heart went out for her because it just. It was great to see that the strength that she's got again. Because she, yeah, she deserves the support. She's done so much for New Zealand. She's done so okay. much. For right. Okay, now now we've got a swear box. What what's the penalty for the swear box? All right, come on. I've only said it once. 
I'm not dropping F bombs left, right, and center. I was told I not to. I haven't said plus the fuck yet, so I, oh, ah, that's Jody. Jackpot. Jackpot. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now now the stream's gonna light up with Jody's comment. That was blew my mind. Sorry. When she came out with that, and I'm like, we're watching it live. And yeah. I had friends all over the world going, it, what? What the hell? What? She just... Nah. No. Hashtag clusterfuck if you're going to use it. Thank I you. Mean, Judy's put me in my place a long time ago. I was uh, knocking around and, you know, the real school mom type thing situation. Um, yeah. You know, so... <laughs> Yeah, I respect you. I love parents. it. And yeah, good on her. Good on her for saying that. I mean, it's it's in the dictionary. It's it's a legitimate word. It's, it's I know. Not a so I know, but the yeah. way she said it, and the reporters and everyone that were in the room, it <laughs> was it, it, uh, that was a couple of them just turned around and went. Oh yeah. it, it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. She just dropped it at the right time after Amanda spoke. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That changed everything from that point on. And yes, I've been a very good boy when I've been on, on the shows during, you know, the Scope series. And, well, I, I still want it on a T-shirt. I don't care. I'll wear it on a t shirt. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Who else would you like to see at that table? Well, you just mentioned Amanda, and I, I think that she would be great there. I mean, they just need to listen. And of course, the one. Actually, actually no, actually, um, Kafra actually had a good point. Every single person that has been part of these programs or or these sessions, I would love to see at COP10, knocking on the door. I mean, in Inco and Av, um, Avcar and and um, AVI, they should be there. They should be allowed to be there. They've got something to say. They are legitimate organisations. They've been it's just rude. It's just childish. Cop yep. 9. F, you know, whoever's, I can't even think of her name now, because it used to be um, De Silva or something. I can't remember how to say it. Vera. But, something okay. But first and foremost, right, from the Australian delegation, there's a handful of people that I'd love to take with me. Yeah. Myself, you, Colin Mendelson, Alex Wodak, um, Adam Middleman, aka Breeze Tones. Yeah. I'd love to take Steve. There's a couple of others, Charlie McCracken, right? And there's very few advocates here as such that really get riled up here in Australia. Okay? Where yeah. there, there's a handful of us that do the heavy lifting for the rest of the community here. Yet we get we get thrown under the bus for calling people out. Why? Because they don't like it. <laughs> why why you know I get singled out, okay? And I I get singled out because I I, I speak my mind. But I, I'd love to wheel you in, right? And have on a t shirt for you under, you know, a suit suit jacket, Thunder from Down Under. Deal with me. Uh, th that'd, that'd be epic. Just wheel you into the room and just go, Thunder from Down Under. Deal with me. It, 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 speak straight. Speak truth. Stop this. Garbage. Yeah, no, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It is absolute. 
I mean, Greg Hunt didn't think about it himself. He 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 did decide oh. to ban nicotine. It wasn't off his bat. No, it wasn't he, actually. He's been lobbied. He would have had been taken. No, no, we know exactly who it was now. All right, no, and okay. I I'm going to be the first one to drop this name. Right, thanks yep. to a very good friend of mine. I haven't dropped this name on any of the programs that I've been part of. His name is Jack Quinane, right? He is the Australian representative to the FCTC, right? Okay. And, right, game on. Game on. And he is the underling of Mr. Hunt. He comes from that same office. That okay. name was given to me by a person that's going to be unnamed for this for the time being. And I've looked into it. I went, hmm, how the hell are you writing policy? And then when I found out that he was the actual delegate, and I thought, hmm, really? And what, you good drinking buddies with Hunt and Scaraday? Hmm. Greg Hunt, yeah. goodbye. Goodbye next election. You're gone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. If he's going to be with his attitude of just total denial, just being paid, I don't know. Has he been paid to be denialist? I, I don't know. But um, his attitude, no, nah, you can't. If, if you make a mistake, own it. I mean, shape. I make so many mistakes in my life. I, You know, I, I'll say the wrong words to the wrong people and stuff at times and we all have. And I'll, and I'll apologise and I'll try to do better and I will try and never do that again to them, you know. It, it's simple. It, it's not a hard thing to, to admit when you're wrong, is it? Because yeah. it sure has, it seems like it when these bloody politicians and their lawyer training, you know, never, never admit to anything and never admit you're wrong. And we've got to stop... Got to stop voting in lawyers, people. Oh, that, that, okay, that's the other funny part. I want to ask you about this. Our health ministers, like, state by state, all right? Oh, you what's, their, not... what's their qualifications? Oh, oh um, Queensland, uh, the previous one, I don't know who it is now, but the previous hmm. one, uh, uh, Dick... Um, what was his name? Um, Cam yep. Cameron Dick. Cameron Dick. Yep. His mother was a nurse. So that, that's why he, he was going to be a health nurse too. He was a bit like Greg Hunt, basically. Sure. And he's the one that uh, decided to make it a criminal offence. Yep. I mean, Stromberg. Is it Stromberg? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's Stromberg. Um, he, he's the one that originally made a ban on it and said that uh, if things change, he, he'll change it. And, of course, he left politics. <laughs> so, you know, the next person's not going to mention or do anything about it because, he said, 90% of the politicians seem to be lawyer trained. You know, they're, they're basically lawyers. Of oh, some but the, the, the funny two that got me, right, was the NT health minister at one stage was actually a school teacher. That that got me baffled, right? And then the, Tas, the Tasmania health minister, um, <laughs> oh, dear, can't, here we go. <laughs> no, 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 don't start with that one. Um, <laughs> you're going to make me laugh. And the second health minister that was in power down in Tasmania at one stage, uh, her only training or anything to do with science, she was actually a vineron or a winemaker. And I <laughs> yeah. thought, what the hell? I know more chemistry than you, and I, I, I used to actually do that at school, right, uh, when I was doing chemistry at, and at university. you got to look at it this way, you know, like... They, they, you know, always testing those wines, falling over, getting cuts and bruises, you know, from 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 being a little bit tipsy. Yeah, I suppose that, that you know, doesn't that make you sort of understand health and all that? 
What? So you can actually get a bottle of dead oil and put it on a little steam. <laughs> that doesn't uh, work with me. That doesn't work with me. Right? I mean, once upon a time, I mean, the guy who baptized me, I mean, he was actually a doctor and before he was a minister and then he became a uh, politician. Right. Right. And I mean, you know, you had people in the field that were given the portfolios for their degrees and what they've been doing in life. Correct. Now it's straight from university, from political course, or political correspondence, whatever, um, working as a well, oh, what's still coming of the word, but yeah, work working for the politicians as, as a nobody coming up through the ranks. You know, I mean, no life experience, and this, we've got to stop it. We've got to stop fighting for these type of people. You know, but but how how do we do this? I have no idea. <laughs> but what, once upon a time. My understanding was that if you went into a ministry or a section of the government, you had to have the qualification. Yes. yes. Am I right or wrong? Or am I I'm losing my mind here? Well, I, I mean, you've got to look at, I mean, past politicians. I mean, they, they're handing in their membership, their life membership, because of what's happening with the parties now. Oh, so we can buy a membership to a party, can we? Oh, no, these ones are earned because they've been politicians. Oh. Okay. Been, well, okay. Because they work for the uh, for the organisation. I mean, you've got to remember that Liberal Party is an actual organisation. It's it's a company. Uh, I thought it was a cult. Sorry? I thought the I, I thought the Liberal Party of Australia or the LNP was actually a cult now. Well, basically, but it is a limit it was a limited um, uh, party limited. This, you know, I mean, the small business, the small company. Um, yes, but you've got politicians, you know, leaving, handing in their membership because of basically the disgust they have for today's politicians. You know, right. I mean, Malcolm Fraser. Someone went up to Malcolm Fraser because he he turned to the Greens and they said, uh, "Why have you changed?" And he said. I haven't changed my ideas. I haven't changed my beliefs. It's just everyone else has moved further to the right of me. Well, away from the principles of the Liberal Party. And if I read the handbook years ago, and they'd broken so many tenets back then, you know, of what the Liberal Party was supposed to be about. It, again, okay, one from the chat. And this comes from Victor also. Um, we need team vapes to go from country to country. Actually, I, I've said this on numerous shows that I've been on. We need a dream team of litigating lawyers that can practice in any country that we go to. And we just walk into a country if there is a problem and FSU. And anyone that understands who I am, they will know what that is. Right? Yeah. If problems, everything up, those that have been earning money from this industry and they're not earning as much money as they used to, if they put some of that money back in to help pay for these litigating lawyers, I don't think we'd be so far down the rabbit hole. We'd at least have a, a rope to sort of hang on to before we fall all the way down. You know, that's, that's the problem. The, the money wasn't there to pay these people to do their job. And, I mean, everyone likes to be paid to do their job. I've got nothing against that, you know. It's, it's, it's hard to put in the words, actually, because what, what I've seen since I've been in and around the industry, okay, on both sides of it, as an advocate for the most part, and yes, I've had skin in the industry, but on different levels for different reasons. But now, and here's Nick Orlando. 
G'day, Nico. How are you? Um, yeah, the Gator Man's here. Um, I, I've seen things from different parts of the world and different advocacy type situations. Australia's unique. Okay. United States is very different because they've got 50 states to deal with. They've got different state organizations. Australia, we're still struggling to get to where we're trying to get to right now. Oh, and it's old as a, as a um, federal government type situation. I mean, it's all still young compared yep. to a lot of these. Yeah, but what's happening here is reflecting around the world. Mm, there's no, there's, there's no two ways. No, no, that's the worst part. I, I can't believe some of these countries are taking what we've been doing. I mean, they're not looking at the statistics. They're not looking at the behind the scenes. Basically, they just think, "Oh, look, here's a good way of making money. We'll just overtax, and and nobody will complain." And, we won't get taken to court for it. We'll just tax the shit out of people. Correct. But I, I think after the discussions I heard between the TGA here in Australia and New Zealand and the UK, the UK now turned around and flipped what Australia said on its head and said, no, we'll just hand out prescriptions. <laughs> You, you just come in and ask and we'll send you or give you a, a note to go to your local vape shop and get a device. And you can deal with it. If you've got a problem with smoking, we will help you. Not make it stupidly hard. Not like the US with the PMTA process. I, I agree with parts of PMTA, but not all of it. You bet that much, but yeah. I mean... uh, you yeah, just but what's like a, mm, and a little bit that was that was that was a very nasty scam basically getting people to spend fortune on on putting you know pmta on the same flavor but because it's got a little bit more nicotine in it it's got to have another pmta oh. on it. You know, crap yeah, no, no, no comment to that because I worked on a lot of the documentation in the background, and a lot of a lot of what was needed to do with flavorings, and it was an absolute nightmare. It still is a nightmare, right? Yeah. And it's not it's not done yet. Okay, but not yeah, done yet. Just basically saying no, no, no. And not giving a reason why they failed their P their, their P M T A business P T M A, sorry, P T M A. Why they failed? They, you know, then they weren't giving reasons. And then I don't know what crap turned it around, but Zeller or whatever is, yeah. yeah. Oh, look, look, you've got overzealous politicians in the United States that want to make a name for themselves right now, okay, and crush the industry. And I said this the other day, that what happens in the United States is like a butterfly effect across the world. Oh. The, the ripples that are starting in the United States now and the overreach, and one of the senators the other day went after one of the labs and said, well, you now have to tell us all your previous forecoming clients because you, <laughs> you, you, you create synthetic nicotine i said excuse me that's overreach that's more than overreach yep they don't have to they shouldn't have to and they shouldn't they shouldn't give them that information and i'm gonna drop an f-bomb i'm sorry h but get fucked raj i'm sorry you might be a senator you you might be in the u.s congress i don't give a flying f who the hell you are when you go that far overreach into a lab that creates pretty much a a pharmaceutical product. Yeah, you don't okay. have that. You don't have that authority. You're oh, asking okay. you're asking completely for 
your whole backlist and everything else and who you're going to be selling to and what you're going to be creating. Really? Uh, do you know what IP is? I'm sorry, intellectual property doesn't work, doesn't fly. And they're the doing the same here. Could you imagine trying to do that to Johnson or Johnson? Or, uh, you know, uh, 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 don't know. Don't bring them into this game because J and J are in a lot of trouble right now. Exactly. Oh, well, um, 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 you name one. You name a, you, you name a, a pharmaceutical company. And I bet you if he tried that on on that pharmaceutical company. Wouldn't happen. The swarm. Wouldn't happen. Wouldn't happen. He'd be, he, he'd be swatted like a little fly. Exactly. He would. He would. But the overreach with this company is yeah. out of control. It is. I totally agree, Paul. I totally agree, mate. And I follow this <laughs> like no one does right now. Mm -hmm. And when I read the document, I, I just laughed. I went, his letter is completely out of control. Oh, yeah. a, a lot of people will agree with me. I couldn't get through it all. I couldn't. I had to, I had to take it three or four days to try and go through bits and pieces of it because it was just like, what the? Is he trying to play at? You know, who does he think he is? I, you know, as well as I do, Nick, you know what I'm talking about. Yep, follow the dollars. And yeah. Sonia, look. Um, yes, and I agree why they're doing that. I agree with that, right? I agree with the government regulating a pod, but I want the nicotine level stripped. From 20 milligrams i i want to open it's not okay uh, uh, no well 20 milligrams doesn't doesn't work for someone that's been smoking three packets a day all right i mean i mean dave dawn he was 72 but i mean he's he got into the the sub aiming and he brought his nicotine levels down because you just cannot not bring your levels down it it, it really no. this has <laughs> left and right. Uh, this thing, it, it really has changed the way that the nicotine affects us. It, it's changed the way because it's, I don't know if it's pure or what, but we... It's, there's a lot There's a lot to do with the chemistry of the nicotine now in the last five years and what's happened. Okay? The, the chemistry of the nicotine has gotten so good, it's not funny. And the delivery system that we have, if for argument's sake, if you get 10% delivery from a cigarette, 10 to 15%, we get 60 to 80% delivery from a heated device in comparison. So, it, and there is no comparison. Yeah. But it hasn't got all the other chemicals to make it sort of like rush no, up. No, 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 no. But uh, okay, and then and then you go into synthetic and salt based next. Yes, they do have similar uptake, but the half life is completely different. It falls away a lot faster. Yeah. So the the purest form of free base is is still the best, but now they've got an even higher. An even higher quality of nicotine through synthetic which is completely with with okay we're not going to do chemistry class right now but it is completely different and there is no tobacco or the original nicotine used as the substrate for it they've completely bypassed that now they, they can create an S isomer, which is completely void of any tobacco variant or or base wow. or, or, or growing agent. Ileana, yeah, I, remember, I just remember Ileana with the, with the, um, the nicotine that she had and she split it and everything. There you go. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know? B13. Uh, B3, B13. Yes. Yes. No, I agree. So, you know, everything that the chat is saying right now, it's it's brilliant. And I'm trouble I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. But you know, I'm glad that you and I are having this discussion. It's the first time ever that you and I have had a discussion like this openly and you're getting your point out there, I'm getting my point out there. And no one's telling us to shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but we have these discussions behind the scenes. But the world needs to really hear what we know. We're not stupid. We're not uneducated. I'm only a consumer. I, I've got no skin in the game. I, I, I'm just a keyboard warrior, basically. Um, oh, here we I'll, go again. Swear box. What's that going to cost me? I'll stand up face up, believe me, uh, if oh. I have to come up to it. But, yeah. But, Victor, um, you're 100% right. The, the governments across the world, heavy-handed, but also yeah. Bloombucks, they, they need to be shut down. Call it out for what it is. I'm sorry. Am I right or wrong? Bruno? Right, mate. Spot on. You're spot on. Pull it out. Stop it. We've got to stop them. And basically, we've got to help people realise that they're being lied to. We've got to help people realise what's going on. I mean, so many people are so busy with work and family and, and they haven't got time to to sit down and study or, or you know, look into something properly. So when they hear that um, oh, nicotine causes cancer, of course they're going to... Oh, believe rubbish. It. Rubbish. By, by some tobacco control specialist that the um, National News Service has, has, has brought in to, to, to tell them about it, you know, or the Dr. Oz thing. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, you know, no. so people are getting their information from all the wrong the wrong places all the wrong angles i mean let's be honest i mean most media the shock horror or they love shock horror and all it's what get people looking it's gets what sells news basically yeah you know? and so and a lot of the I mean, I'm, I suppose you can call me a fanatical too because I'm on one side, but the fanatical antis, they they just are getting listened to and, and people are believing what they say. That's why you've now got more smokers believing that vaping is more dangerous than smoking. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the swear box is going to be full by the end of this week. How, how, how much? How much now have I got in the swear box? I'm an Aussie. I can't help myself. <laughs> oh, I, hey, I've only dropped the f bomb twice. Really? <laughs> really? Well, I haven't been listening to myself, so I don't know what I've been saying. No, you you haven't you haven't dropped the f bomb yet. It's me. I've been oh, right. told, swear box, twice. That's it. So, I so win, you lose. I'm a saint after all. <laughs> Not to the yeah, end, it's, all, it's all lies, Victor. It's yeah. all lies. If, if I was to pull up a chart right now, okay, between the nicotine molecule and the caffeine molecule, you overlay them, there's not much difference. Uh, oh, you got the models there. Good on you. No, oh, I thought you reached for the model. No, I, I just shut something off. Oh, I thought you were sort of like Ileana, you know, you, you've got your. Uh... No, we're, no, we're still waiting. We're still waiting for the good doctor to send one to Kevin so he understands what a molecule feels like in his hand. Oops. Ah, <laughs> I said that. <laughs> I'm the first. Yeah, I 
I got you on that one, Patrick. I win, you lose. Wasn't it a molecule that they actually transported from one place to another with, with like what? Uh, Which uh, molecule? I don't know. There's a uh, uh, some many molecules we travel around the world on a day to day basis. Yeah, but no, I had some some experiment with the uh, moving molecules around to try and change things. But they're getting there. They're getting there. No, you can change hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen. things like that. Yeah, sure. That's what yeah. they've been doing. That's what they've been doing in synthetic nicotine for quite some time. Yeah. The, oh, the Spock molecule. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to have a party tonight. Um, <laughs> that is a stage. That'd be a good start. Sorry? A replicator. For the food yeah. and the drink, you know. Oh, well, yeah, that replicator as well. We're not, no, we're not going to turn this into a geek show, all right? No, I was going to say, I was just going to say, but unfortunately, if someone did invent it, there would be a group that would think it's a bad thing and it should be shut down and, 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 and prohibition upon it. Okay, hang on one second. Um, what would you, what would you like to say to the, cop delegates right now if you had the opportunity please honestly and the swear box isn't in play no where did Bernie go I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I was just, I was just right. writing your, I was just writing your text. <laughs> no. Put him up oh. on full screen for me, please. What would you like to say right now to the cop delegates? And there's no swear box in play here. We're talking to Victor, aren't we? No, we're talking to the world, Bruni. Right. You are. No, you are about to speak to the world. I want to hear what you want to say. What I want to say to the cop is let's get serious. Stop these silly games using children as, as an excuse when, you know, you're not talking about alcohol, which is far worse, the binge drinking and everything that than using nicotine. They're not listening to why kids are using nicotine you know parents should be questioning not that it's a bad thing and, and yelling at them and screaming at them and doing wrong by, by smoking no by by you know they need to send somebody in to talk to them to find out what it is that nicotine is giving them you know because we know as ourselves you know like myself you know it calms me down it stops you feeling so angry um, ADHD, we know that they, that they prefer nicotine because then they can stay awake in class and, and they can actually concentrate, you know, because it does have positive effects. These lies about damaging kids and all this sort of stuff, I'm sorry, I just, I just, it's hurting the kids worse. And it's only forcing them to do more because if you say no to a kid, it's their job to rebel. That's how they grow up. That's how they become their own person and not just some little robot, you know, doing as, as they're told all the time, which, yeah, it wouldn't be that bad. But um, COP9, you've got to stop this, this, this school child attitude that you've been playing with. Come on, smarten up. Straighten up. Let's get some serious discussion going about nicotine. Let's get some serious discussion going about usage. All right. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, man. No, I appreciate that because I'll say it to anyone. You and, you and I have been in the trenches for a long, long time. Okay? A long, long time. 
I respect you and I call you one of my brothers. And I mean that wholeheartedly. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you for allowing me to have a off-the-cuff discussion with a good friend of mine, Bruni. And I hope some of you guys learnt something. I hope some of you listened to what and we provoked a little bit of thought within the community from a different angle. And what we're dealing with here in Australia openly and behind the scenes. I really appreciate it. And thank you, people. Next on the card, I'm not sure who's coming up, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks thank for putting you. up with me. <laughs> oh, putting up with you. I love you, brother. Peace out, guys. Thank you. So we are uh, we, we are endeavoring to talk about.